it out what you're putting in All your hopes and efforts are all in vain Who will pick you up when you've lost everything? And welcome everybody. I wanted to do an add-on regarding updating an image because I have a lot of a lot of people who are building their own labs and, and practicing whether it's virtualized or physical with the adaptive security appliance. And one of the questions was, how do I how do I update my image for ASDM? And I thought, well, um, one of the questions I got was, how do I get that working to begin with? Which I did a short video on that. And this one I'm going to do a video on how I could update it, update the ASDM image. I mean, is it possible? And the answer is yes. And it's possible whether you have physical gear or if it's virtualized inside of Cisco Modeling Labs or Viral or in GNS3 or in EVNG or some other platform, it's you're able to update that software. So I'm going to share with you currently going into ASDM, leaving off where we had in the previous video and showing you how we can see what the version is for ASDM. That's the graphical user interface that we can use to talk to and connect to an ASA and then how we can upgrade it. Let's get into it. Here we go. So this is ASDM where we left it in our previous video. And I'm on the homepage here and it says version 9.12. This is in Cisco Modeling Labs. Brought it up from scratch in the previous video. And here's the IP address of the device we're con connected to. And here's the ASDM version right here, 7.12. So you know what, the thing is that if seven, this is gonna be enough to do everything you need to do. But for some, if for some reason you wanted to upgrade to a newer version, you could do we should do two things. Number one, we should verify based on the online documentation which versions of the ASA support which versions of ASDM, right? To make sure we're not trying to cram an ASDM version that's not compatible with the ASA we're using. That wouldn't be good. And then secondly, once we have that file uh, and we want to upgrade it, I want to walk you through how to do it. Now, the actual ASDM image, if you have a support contract with Cisco, you can download it from their Cisco website. If you don't have a support contract, um, Google could be used as well. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Uh, yeah, Google's an, or whatever your favorite search engine is, is what I'm trying to say here. All right, so I've got, uh, this is 7.12. I've got a newer version of the software. I've downloaded it. I also put it on a TFTP server. Uh, maybe it was FTP. In either case, you can copy fair, uh, several different ways. It's gone. Hold on a second, let me bring it up. FileZilla. I use FileZilla. I like it. So this is FileZilla, and I've got a user account called Cisco. I just set up. This is free. And I pointed to the downloads folder for its files, and that's where that file is, the updated file. And then we're simply going to go ahead and update it. So how do we do that? Um, we make the file available in FileZilla or whatever your favorite program is. You can use TFTP or FTP. There's other, some other more secure options as well. I'm going to use FTP for this demo. And we're going to go to the command line. So let me bring up the command line for this ASA. And let's do a show. Well, let's just do a quick ping. I want to verify cell reachability. Oh, I'm I'm connected via ASDM. I'm good. All right, great. And let's do a ping out to eight 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 eight. Oh, no route. Hmm. Okay. Uh, we didn't add a route in the last video, but I'm gonna do it. <laughs> route outside. That says route. I want to create a route using the outside interface, and then we'll specify. Oh, okay, 0000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 and the next top of 192.168.1.1. That's my default gateway in my home network. Do a WR, copy run start, and then we'll do a ping out to 8888. <laughs> oh, oh, I love it. So this is ASDM saying, you made some changes at the CLI, or somebody did, and I'm looking at old data, and do you want to refresh? I'm going to say, yes, don't show me that again, refresh, and that just rereads the configuration into ASDM. All right. So we'll see that anytime we make a change on the ASDM. All right, or anytime we make a change at the CLI, well, <laughs> anytime we make a change at the CLI, we'd wanna now refresh with this button right here, refresh the ASDM. So let's update the software from 7.12. Talking about the ASDM software. So to do that, we are gonna use 
And I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste a little bit here to make this a little bit less of a typing exercise. I am going to use this command right here. Paste. Let's talk about this. Copy FTP colon, which is the protocol I'm using. That's the FileZilla set up for. Uh, FTP colon whack whack. And then I put the username colon and then the password for that user. I hadn't done this for maybe a year or two. <laughs> I was like, what's the syntax again for that update? Uh, and so it is copy space, in this case, FTP colon whack whack, the username colon, the password for that username, then an at sign, and then the rest of the URL as you'd normally have it. So it's at 192.168.1.207. That's the IP address of my FTP server that I'm running FileZilla on my local computer. And then I'm simply saying the destination is flash flash on this ASA and we'll press enter and it's just confirming the address, confirming the name, confirming the password and the source file name. What is the source file name? It's AS. I should have written that down. Uh, I think it's, <laughs> let me take a peek. Uh, let's see here. Let me take a peek. Oh, it's ASDM-782. All right. ASDM-782.bin. If that's not right, it'll tell me. It wants me to confirm. All right. And that is just off to the races. That shouldn't take very long. It's a fairly small file. And we'll do a WR. And let's do a show ASDM image. So it's still pointing to the old ASDM image. That's okay. I've got ASDM running. Um, but let's change it. Say ASDM image. And we'll say it's on flash. And the file name is ASDM, right? We'll do a show ASDM image. Another option is you could delete the other one and then just have only one ASDM image. But it's always better to point when you can to make sure that the router, or in this case, the ASA, knows exactly what you want to do. All right, so it's pointing to 782. Let's close ASDM. I'll just uh, file, exit, and buy. See you ASDM, and we'll just launch the launcher again. ASDM launcher, which I installed in the previous video with a, just a couple clicks. We'll go to that address, and username is admin. Password is Cisco123, top secret. Don't tell, don't tell anybody. And then <laughs> click on OK. All right. It says loading cache software, software updated Update completed. And look at that right there, ASDM version. It's a uh, 782. So now again, if that does not bias anything, if there's no additional features or bug fixes or whatever, you don't really need to update it. But if you do, I wanted to share with you how to do it. Also, if you don't have an ASDM image, if you're working with, let's go back to the big screen. If you're working with a physical device, or if you're working with another virtualized platform and you don't have the image present at all, you would need it there in order for it to work. So if you have a situation where the image isn't there, you could use TFTP or FTP, copy the image to the disk store, storage system and point to it on that ASA, whether it's in EVNG or viral or CML, which we're using here, or physical gear. That's how you go ahead and do it. So thanks for joining me in this video as we take a look, took a look at how to upgrade ASDM on an ASA, and again, that's in the event that you want it. If you want to focus just on CCNA topics, that's fantastic. I strongly recommend that everyone who's in IT go for the fundamentals of CCNA. It'll benefit you, and no matter what your station in life is, no matter where you're coming from, the CCNA and that knowledge you get from the CCNA is going to help you as a really important foundation stepping stone towards ever whatever you choose to do. So I recommend getting the CCNA for everybody. Get the knowledge. And if you don't want to test, that's fine too. But I would certainly say get the knowledge and the foundation. It will help you. And it's the great equalizer. I mean, on the internet, we have a lot of free training. I work at CBT Nuggets. A lot of you know that. And we have some really amazing courses there. But it's subscription-based. But besides that, there's a lot of – there's books. There's a lot of free training on the internet. There is lots of resources. And so my, my goal, my challenge for you would be if you're considering the CCNA or, if you, or you had that as a goal and you thought, eh, I'd like you to recommit. Recommit and say, I'm all in. I'm going to get this cert. And in the process, I'm going to learn it. 
I'm going to learn the techniques and like ARP and DHCP and the concepts, the high level overview of like programmability and automation, what, where that fits. You don't have to memorize like the details of writing a Python script, but it's important to know the basics of it. Switching, trunking, ether channel, routing, uh, multi-layer switching with a multi-layer switch, routing protocols, how to set up a router, how to make, how to read a routing table, how to know which routes go into the routing table, VLANs, all that. That's all really important and will continue to be important no matter what you're working in in the world of networking. Because even even it's I gotta get off my soapbox. <laughs> even if it's all virtualized, which in this environment I just demonstrated, every ounce of this was virtualized. So even if it's all virtualized, the concepts are the same, and those will serve you well in the future. So thanks for uh, watching this video. If you liked it or got value out of it, give it a thumbs up. Let other people know. If you are focusing on your CCNA, uh, this channel, the Keith Barker channel, it's there. Our objective is to give you the tools and tips today to help you get your CCNA and in your journey. So whatever main study course you're using, whether it's CBT Nuggets or something else, it's all good as long as you have some major course or major structure for your study. We want to help you in filling in some of those gaps and helping reinforce the concepts and get your CCNA because it will change your life. It will. It will help you in all your aspects of IT. And I continue. I would also encourage you after you get your CCNA, after that, not chasing 12 things at once, but after that, take it to the next level and then the next level and keep on learning. I'll see you in the next live event if you're interested in uh, gamification of of uh, Cisco CCNA 200-301 topics like OSPF and routing and subnetting and, and all the cool topics. We have on every Sunday at 11 a.m. Pacific time, so get out your world calendars to coordinate what time that is. We have a live event every Sunday where we combine. Um, it's like a game. Imagine a game that you really love and flashcards. <laughs> Because flashcards, I think, are pretty important. So if we could take gamification and flashcards and put them together in something amazing that we would love, what would, what would we call And have it be free. What would we call that? We'd call that Sundays at 11 a.m. Pacific time with Keith as we do an online quiz game with Kahoot using CCNA topics as the subject matter. So they're a lot of fun, and I'll announce those on social. And we have capacity for up to 2,000 people at the same time playing this game. And so if you're, if you're a new person, join us. And I, I use some, there's safety measures in place so you can feel totally safe as you participate and play. If you're an expert and you've got a couple CCIEs, join us, compete. <laughs> if you're brand new, compete. And that way, every time we ask a question, we can go ahead and elaborate on that and talk about why it's true or why it's not true or how this works or how that works. So it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of great training that go on and it helps reinforce the skills or possibly introduce a couple things that you perhaps hadn't thought of. All right, I will get off that soapbox. It's great to see you and I'll see you in the next live event. Thanks everybody. What you're putting in